Reading limits from a graph. All right, let's start by taking a look at this first example. So here we have this function f of x. It's a piecewise function. And we're asked to evaluate the following limits. So the first limit is as x approaches negative 2 from the right side of negative 2. So we find negative 2 and the right side of negative 2. So as we approach from the right side of negative 2, what's happening to our y values? They're getting closer and closer to 0. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right is 0. The next example is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left side of negative 2. So here's the left side of negative 2. So we want to go along the function and we're getting closer and closer to a value of 3. So a y value of 3. So this limit from the left of negative 2 is positive 3. So the third question asks us to find the limit as x approaches negative 2. So since there's no plus or minus, that means from both sides. So we found from the right side was 0 and from the left side was 3. So since the limit from the right does not match the limit from the left, we can say that this limit does not exist. So now let's move on to the limit as x approaches 1. So we want to know what happens as I approach 1 from both sides. So here's my x value of 1. So as I approach from the left side, now I'm looking at this part of the function, which stops at negative 2. And as I approach 1 from the right side, so when I say I approach, I want to get kind of close to it already and then move closer to that particular point. So from the right side, I get closer and closer to 4. So negative 2 and 4 are not equal. There's this jump happening here. They don't go to the same value. So the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x also does not exist. Now sometimes students want to say that the answer is 1 because that's where they see the filled in circle. But remember, limits don't care about where the function is defined. So if you wanted to know where the filled in circle was, that question would be written as, what is f of 1? f of 1 is wherever you see the filled in circle. So f of 1, that's 1. But the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side and from the left side, I don't get close to the same value, so there is no limit. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaches 2. So here we'll find 2. So as I approach from the right side of 2, so going up to the function, as I approach from the right side of 2, it looks like I get close to 6. And from the left side of 2, it looks like I get close to 6. So again, it's it's basically a filled in circle here, right? We don't accentuate it by filling it in bigger, but it, it is a filled in circle. It's a defined point. So from both sides of 2, I'm getting closer to 6. So this limit is 6. The limit as x approaches 5 of f of x. So here I'll find 5. Well, my function's not defined here at 5, but from the left side of 5, and the right side of 5, I'm getting closer and closer to a y value of 5. So this limit equals 5. And then finally, the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x. So here's 8. So as I get close to 8 from the right and from the left, I'm getting closer to this y value of 0. So again, it's a filled in circle. There's no hole in the graph, but that's fine. We get closer and closer from both sides of 8 on the y-axis to the value of 0. So we've completed the first example, and now we'll take a look at the next example, which will include limits at infinity and infinite limits. All right, here in the second example, we're being told that f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4 and a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So here's my, my function again, my f of x, and I'm asked to evaluate the following limit. So this time, we have a limit at infinity to begin with. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. So remember, negative infinity is way over here. So as I approach negative infinity, What's happening to my function? Well, I was told there's a horizontal asymptote at 4. So I have this horizontal asymptote here. So as I get closer and closer to negative infinity on the x-axis, I'm getting closer and closer to this value of positive 4 on the y-axis. So this first limit is negative 4. So now, what about what happens when I approach positive infinity? So positive infinity on the x-axis is off to the right. 
So what's happening to my blue function here is that these values are headed towards infinity. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And up here is where positive infinity is on the y-axis. So this limit at infinity happens to equal positive infinity. So this one does not exist. It doesn't define a horizontal asymptote on the right side. So now the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side of 0. So as x approaches 0 from the left side of 0, the y values on the blue function are headed down towards negative infinity. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, my y values are heading down towards negative infinity. So as I approach some number from the left, I got out negative infinity, so this is an infinite limit. And then as I approach 0 from the right side of 0, so now I'm getting closer to 0 from the right, well now my function's getting closer and closer to this y value of 5. So it doesn't matter that there is a hole right there, it just matters that we get closer and closer to this y value of 5. So now the limit as x approaches 0, well from the left side of 0 I get close to negative infinity, from the right side of 0 I get close to 5, these two are definitely not equal, so we can say that this limit does not exist. Similarly, neither did this third limit because the answer was negative infinity, so this one technically did not exist, but we could classify it to go towards a particular infinity, goes towards negative infinity. So now in this last example, in this last function, we've been told that the horizontal asymptote occurs at y equals 0, and we have a vertical asymptote occurring at x equals negative 4. So now this first problem, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. So as I get close to negative infinity, or I head towards negative infinity, my y values are getting closer and closer to 0, because I was told there's this horizontal asymptote here at 0. Now the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. So as I look off to positive infinity on the x-axis, I notice that I have this function that oscillates. So it's oscillating and it's getting closer and closer as I move further and further towards positive infinity. It's getting closer and closer to zero. So the limit as x approaches infinity here is actually zero. So as I head way over here towards positive infinite values, I'm going to keep going back and forth, but I'm going to keep going closer and closer to zero every time. And that's the definition of an asymptote. So off to the left, we had this asymptote that I approached only from positive values. But on the right side, I'm still approaching zero, but I'm bouncing back and forth between positive and negative values, but they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now let's stop for a quick second, because I said y equals zero was a horizontal asymptote, and I crossed it. So my question is, is it OK to cross a horizontal asymptote? And the answer is yes, it is OK to cross a horizontal asymptote. What it's not OK to cross is a vertical asymptote. So a lot of students think that you can't cross a horizontal one because you can't cross a vertical one. That's just not true. So I can cross a horizontal asymptote, but I cannot cross a vertical asymptote. So now let's go ahead and look at the limit as x approaches 3. So 3 is right here between 2 and 4 on the x-axis. And I want to know, well, what y value am I getting closer to? Now, this function, near 3, is also oscillating, but it's oscillating too much, right? There's too much jumping back and forth. I really can't tell. It looks like one blob right here at 3, so I can't tell what's going on. So based on the graph, this limit does not exist. I can't see what's going on near 3. There's too much oscillation. But over here at this limit at infinity, while I was oscillating, and that was OK. So just because the function's oscillating doesn't mean that the limit definitely doesn't exist. It's only when there's too much oscillation near the particular value you're trying to take the limit at. So now the limit as x approaches negative 4. So negative 4 is where I had my vertical asymptote. And as I approach negative 4 from the left side of negative 4, I head towards positive infinity. And from the right side of negative 4, I head towards positive infinity. So since I go to the same infinity on both sides of negative 4, I'm going to say that my answer is positive infinity. Now, 
this technically does not exist, if you remember, because I can't have this be a non-real uh, number. So this has to be some number if the limit exists. But I write infinity because it tells me something about the graph. It tells me that as I get close to negative 4 on the x-axis, my function goes up to positive infinity on both sides. As opposed to, if I said negative 4, at negative 4 I went up to positive infinity on the left, but then my function actually went down here, then I'd have to say that the limit just does not exist. I couldn't put positive infinity and negative infinity. So I'm only putting positive infinity because both sides of negative 4 are going up towards positive. One's not going up and the other one's not going down, in which case I would just write does not exist. And then the last example, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. So as x gets close to 0 from both sides of 0, you'll notice I get closer and closer to this y value of 1. So the function is defined there. There's no hole in the graph, but that's perfectly OK. So the, function, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals 1.